In this video, we're going to cover the key things you need to know about a common condition called a hiatus hernia. We'll include what the different types are, as well as symptoms, how it's diagnosed, treatment, and potential complications. But before we start the video, I'd like to encourage you to consider leaving your experiences in the comments section if you've got a hiatus hernia or you've had one in the past, because this can be a great help for other people who are watching the video and going through a similar experience. So before we get into the video, I think it's worth explaining what a hernia is. And a a hernia is simply the medical term that's given when part of an organ pushes through a muscular wall that holds it in place. And there are lots of different types of hernias, but the specific one we're going to be talking about in today's video is a hiatus hernia. And this is where part of the stomach pushes up into the lower chest through a weakness in the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is the large flat muscle that separates the lungs from the abdomen. So now we know what a hiatus hernia is, well let's briefly discuss the two different types. And these are sliding as well as rolling. So firstly, a sliding hiatus hernia. This is the most common type, and in this situation, the sphincter muscle at the bottom of the food pipe and the top of the stomach protrude through the hole, or the hiatus opening in the diaphragm. Now the hernia might slide up and down and in and out of the lower chest. It's often quite small, but it can get bigger. And this type of hiatus hernia tends to be associated with the symptoms of acid reflux, which might cause you to have heartburn. And we're going to go into this in more detail later on in the video when we discuss symptoms. The next type of hiatus hernia is a rolling hiatus hernia. Now, this is much less common than a sliding hiatus hernia, and it's where part of the stomach pushes up or protrudes up through the hole in the diaphragm next to the esophagus. Now, other organs as well as the stomach can protrude up in rare circumstances. And these include things like the pancreas, the spleen, or the upper gut. Now, although this is not the normal type of hiatus hernia, it's important to know about because it's more risky and there's more chance of the other organ protruding up and getting stuck, which causes a blockage known as an obstruction. So now we know a little bit about the two types, sliding and rolling. Remember, sliding is the more common type. Well, what causes a hiatus hernia? So the exact cause of a hiatus hernia is not fully clear. Although most people who develop it are over 50 years old, it can occur at any age. Now, the reasons that are hypothesized for this are that the diaphragm muscles often weaken with age, which allows part of the stomach to push up through the hole in the diaphragm. Now, other factors might make it more likely for you to develop hiatus hernia. So these are things that increase pressure in the tummy. So if you cough regularly, you're going to increase the intra-abdominal or inside your abdomen pressure, making it more likely that your stomach can push up through that hole in the diaphragm into your chest wall. Other things like lifting heavy objects or being overweight can also put you more at risk of a hiatus hernia. And it's also thought that if one of your close relatives has had a hiatus hernia, you may be more at risk as well. Now, operations around the stomach and the food pipe can also make you more likely to get the rolling type of hiatus hernia, as well as deformities of the spine like scoliosis. And in very rare cases, Babies can develop a hiatus hernia. This is known as a congenital hiatus hernia, but because this video is going to focus on adults, we won't discuss this in much detail here. So what are the symptoms? Well, the key thing to mention here is that many people who have a hiatus hernia don't get any symptoms. If you do get symptoms, then a common one is acid reflux, also known as heartburn. And with this, you might get a burning feeling which rises from the upper tummy or lower chest up towards the neck. But if this doesn't go away or it's very severe, you should go to hospital. You may also get pain in the upper abdomen, feeling sick, having an acid taste in the mouth, as well as bloating, belching, difficulty swallowing, or a burning pain when you swallow hot drinks. Now, typically these symptoms of heartburn or acid reflux tend to come and go, and they can be worse after a meal, especially if the meal is hot or has spicy foods in it. More uncommon symptoms of a hiatus hernia are things like a persistent cough, particularly at night. This could be due to refluxed acid irritating the windpipe, or more vague symptoms like a bad breath. So how is hiatus hernia diagnosed? Well, a hiatus hernia might be diagnosed if you have tests for symptoms of reflux. A special x-ray test called a barium swallow is sometimes used to confirm this, but more commonly, something called an endoscopy is being used. This is where a thin, flexible telescope is passed down your food pipe into the stomach. 
So what's the best treatment for a hiatus hernia? Well, if you've got no symptoms and it's not bothering you, then in most cases you don't need any treatment. Now, there are things you can do at home to try and minimize your symptoms, and these include trying to lose weight if you're overweight. You should also avoid things that put excessive pressure on your stomach. So if you wear tight clothing or corsets, you should try avoid this. If you do smoke, then it's always best to try stop. And if you do drink lots of alcohol, try and cut down. Now, if you're getting symptoms like heartburn and a cough at night, then it might help you to raise the head of your bed or sleep with more pillows and that's simply because gravity will mean the acid brush is less likely to come up the food pipe and cause the symptoms. You should also avoid eating your dinner too close to bedtime and this might help with symptoms at night and you should ideally aim to have your dinner at least three hours before you go to bed. Now smaller meals may also be helpful and try avoid foods which trigger off your heartburn, things like spicy foods. Now if changing your lifestyle doesn't help you might need medication. The most commonly prescribed medicines are the ones which work by reducing the amount of acid that your stomach produces. These are called proton pump inhibitors or PPIs, so things like omeprazole or lanzoprazole. Now these aren't suitable for everyone, some people do develop side effects from them. So if you find that you can't tolerate them, then your doctor can suggest other alternatives. And if you want to learn more about omeprazole or lanzoprazole, I've made two other videos which you can find on this channel. Now one of the specific questions that I'm often asked about these medicines from viewers is whether or not long-term PPIs are linked to stomach cancer. Well the current advice is that more research is needed, but you should only take PPIs at the lowest dose and for the shortest period of time possible because there is a potential risk it can increase the risk of stomach cancer if you take them for a long period of time. Very rarely a hiatus hernia causes severe symptoms of reflux which aren't helped so well with medication. In these cases the medical team might advise you to have an operation. Now I won't go into great details here about how the operation works because I'm not a surgeon but the basic premise is that the stomach is put back into the correct position and the weakened diaphragm muscle around the food pipes tightened. Now this is usually done using a laparoscope which is a telescope inserted into the stomach and it can need repeating. There are obviously risks as well as benefits to having an operation so it's important that you ask your surgeon about these so you can make an informed decision before going ahead with this option if it's presented to you. Finally, what are the possible complications of a hiatus hernia? Well, possible complications might occur if you've got long-term reflux of acid going up into your food pipe. And we're going to cover these in turn here briefly. So first of all, something called esophagitis. This is basically inflammation of the lining of the gullet, which is caused by the acid washing over it over time. And this can be usually treated with the PPI medicines that we discussed earlier. You may also have this persistent cough because of the acid reflux going back up and affecting your voice box area, which is your larynx. And this can give you a constant tickly cough. Again, this is typically treated using the PPI medicines. You may also get narrowing. Now, in medical terms, this is called a stricture, and this is narrowing of the food pipe. So if you've got long-term severe inflammation, it can cause narrowing of your food pipe, but this is uncommon. You may also get Barrett's esophagus. So this is where the lining of the food pipe is made up of a number of units called cells. In Barrett's esophagus, the cells that line the lower esophagus change, and these changed cells are more prone than usual to becoming cancerous. About one in 20 men and one in 33 women with Barrett's esophagus go on to develop cancer of the esophagus. Finally, your risk of developing cancer of the esophagus is slightly increased compared to normal risk if you've got long-term acid reflux. And this small increased risk is slightly higher still in people with reflux plus a hiatus hernia. And that's because reflux problems on average tend to be more severe in people with hiatus hernia compared to those without a hiatus hernia. But like I mentioned, the increased risk is small. Finally, if you've got pain or difficulty when you swallow, so you have food that is sticking in your food pipe, you should speak to your doctor. Similarly, if you find that you're often coughing or spluttering when you swallow liquids, you should also see your doctor. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful and you now understand what a hiatus hernia is, the different types, so sliding and rolling, some potential causes, as well as symptoms, how we try and treat this, so conservative methods with things like PPIs, weight loss, 
and lifestyle measures and finally some potential options for surgery which of course come with risks and benefits and finally some of the complications of long-term acid reflux and hiatus hernias. If you do want to learn more please do check out the description box I put lots of useful extra resources and trusted resources there and if you do feel like the video was helpful and useful please do consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and until next time bye.